Hi, I'm Randy Robinson. This is Life Today TV. I have Danielle Strickland here with me. She's the author of a book called A Beautiful Mess, which uh, is a story about her life, but it's also, I think, probably an, uh, an appropriate label for a lot of the lives that she reaches as she does her work with the Salvation Army uh, up in Edmonton, Alberta, yeah? Yeah. And so, soon uh, Los Angeles. Oh, mm -hmm. well, that gets really messy down there. Yep, indeed. It gets more and more messy and beautiful. So right? just give us a quick overview. I don't want to necessarily yes. recap everything from the television show, but just a quick overview of what you do. Yeah. Okay, so I work with the Salvation Army. My day job is as an officer with the Salvation Army, and that just uh, means I'm about uh, bringing God's light and freedom and hope to people in uh, local places as well as I'm super committed uh, to helping to stop uh, the world's fastest growing crime of human trafficking. Yeah. So I'm really keen. One of the things that gets me all kind of excited is to motivate people to help, to do something, to bring God's kingdom on earth, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there, uh, you mentioned brothels. Yes. In Canada? Yes, well, we call them massage parlors, oh, okay. but they are... So it's uh, not legal up there. It's not legalized, although we've just... Uh, I was part of a team that advocated to change the laws in Canada. So we've just adopted what's called a Nordic model of uh, around prostitution, which is really interesting, where, uh, you know, it's kind of a bit like domestic violence, where, you know, 25, 30 years ago, we really sort of were like, it's every woman's choice to marry a guy, and it's none of our business to kind of get in the way. Until we started realizing that violence against women changes a scenario and it's actually not quite up to the woman and society needs to kind of say actually that kind of behavior is not going to work for us it's not okay with us and now we understand that domestic violence you know the victims don't have to testify we understand some of the implications of that and we believe lots of us uh, that do grassroots work in uh, with prostituted women that prostitution is simply violence against women and needs to be stopped and, uh, you know, lots of people say, oh, it's the world's oldest profession. And I always say, no, actually, it's the world's oldest oppression. Oh, wow. And oppression's something that needs to stop, right? Yeah. So we believe, actually, there's a day coming. In Canada, we, we just passed the laws. So we've made it um, not illegal to sell sex because we understood that that law victimized women who were having to sell sex. Right. And it kind of just got them in more and more trouble. So it made them the perpetrator. Right. And it re-victimized them. So it's not illegal to sell sex. It's illegal now to buy sex. So you go so for the guys. So it flipped. Yeah. So yeah. we went for the guys and we went for the Johns and we went for the people with the power and the money and the choice. You know, the real choice is in choosing to buy or not to buy. True. Uh, and so, and then also there's a third, the third prong is to kind of increase the ways out for women who are involved in that. Sure. Yeah. and to give them some actual legitimate choices. Mm. Mm. There's a term that you've written a book about yeah. uh, and that means different things to different people and maybe even uh -huh. different things in different societies and that's yes. the term social justice. Yes. What does that mean to you in the context that you Yeah, well for me, it? I mean justice, you know, Dr. Cornel West one time said justice is just love in public, which I, I really liked. It's a bit simple but I like it. It really is justice is love in public and in uh, biblical, you know, we, we could say biblical justice. I think that for social justice to occur, which means sort of, I believe as a Christian, it means that's when God shows up. That's when God yeah. shows up and things change, things shift, right? I think there's probably three things that need to happen for justice to sort of occur. And uh, one is uh, egalitarian justice, which is equal rights, which is to say that we're all created equal. So if all of us are created intrinsically equal, it means that people can't be for sale, actually. Yeah. It means that people can't be treated differently based on race or background or gender or social economics or any of those things. So equality is a big part of justice. I think distribution is a massive part of justice. So distributive justice is, is that, you know, Mother Teresa once said to the BBC reporter who was saying, how can you believe in a God who allows such poverty to happen? And she said to him, you know, don't you go blaming poverty on God. She said, there's more than enough for the whole world to eat. It's just that his children refuse to share. Hmm. That's, again, simplified view, but it's a very powerful truth. That there is. is more than enough resources on the earth. That's so there true. needs to be some redistribution of wealth in order for justice to occur. And then there's legislative justice. And that's when we actually know that there needs to be some laws to protect the vulnerable. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, you know, a law can't make a man love me, but it can stop him from lynching me. And that's not a bad place to start. Right. 
And it's true, it starts somewhere, doesn't it? So this Canadian law that's going to protect women and not re-victimize them and actually uh, try to hold men to account for their behavior against uh, women in the, in the plight of stopping human trafficking, those are important things. So when all of those three things come together, equality, distribution, and legislation, you have the presence of social justice. It means that actually the world changes, something shifts. And what that means is that we live in a better world. So when Jesus said to his disciples, you know, this is how you should pray. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I think he meant it. I think actually that looks like something. It looks like salvation personal. It looks like the conditions of the world changing. It looks like, you know, the end of extreme poverty. It looks like the end of violence against women. It looks like the end of the commodification of human beings. I mean, it looks like God's kingdom come. How do you propose to achieve the redistribution of wealth? Because that's a, obviously a, a big point of a lot of secular societies, socialistic societies, mm -hmm. you know, communism, <laughs> redistribution of wealth. Right, right. Yeah. You know, that's a buzz phrase that you hear. Yeah, absolutely. So how, do you, how, does that, how does that square with God's vision of things where well, you I don't mean, steal I, from your neighbor? To, you yeah, know. I mean, I think the simple thing, I think, is to say to everybody, you know, how are you living? You know, and I know that there's more complicated things in terms of how government structures work and how states work. But I mean, even as simple as I've always lived in sort of lower socioeconomic communities, sort of by calling. I feel like God's called me to live there. And my son went to an inner city school uh, that was really underfunded in, a, in Australia. And Australia had a fairly, you know, has a fairly decent economy and is, is uh, set up. So everyone's paying their taxes and the schools should pretty much be the same, but they aren't the same. And my friend's daughter was going to her school and she had, you know, a plethora of after school activities right. between tennis or dance she could choose. Right. And my son, you know, had nothing. Right. And I said uh, to the school board, you know, talk to me about how you're distributing the wealth in this, in this city. Right. How is it that that school has this and this school has this? Right. And why is that okay? And I think those are the conversations that we need to start having in terms of the... Re I know that's a big, it's a political issue yeah, here often in America. Yeah, it can be abused and, and it can be legalized robbery. Yeah. Yes. You know, thievery. Of course. And, I mean, I think that's a social s structure system. So where there are total abuses, I think it's, it's the church's job, it's the people of God's job to say, hey, this isn't what God's kingdom looks like. Right. God's kingdom looks like actually equality. God's kingdom looks like distribution. So what does that look like? Yeah. And then I, 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 everyone, even if you're on welfare, of course, in North America, you're part of the top 3% of the wealthiest people on the planet. Right. So there's also that. There's also saying, how is it possible that we can be so, uh, so greedy uh, with what it is that we have when the world actually is starving to death. So I think extreme poverty, for example, yeah. and allowing that to happen on the earth is a sin. Actually, I, I think that's uh, literally we'll be held accountable. For yeah, that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I've, in my travels, and I've been to some yeah. of the worst countries yeah. in, in the world, um, where there is abject poverty, to me, the thing that I've noticed, at least anecdotally, is that where there's a lack of food, where there's the abject poverty, uh, lack of clean drinking water. Um, it's not usually the result of an absence of food. Yes, there's an absence of food in the area, mm -hmm. but the resources are there globally, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, it's it's human corruption that's sure. caused the condition where that sure. flourishes. Yes, and and usually at a governmental level. Yes, because that's where they get their you know they drive their power. Right. Have you seen? Is that yes. Does That's that bear a any witness very to me? common. To me, it's Absolutely. like if we can get rid of the corruption, those mm -hmm. other things would go away. Yes. You know. Yeah, and so I think I think it's a matter of addressing. I think advocacy is a big, big missing piece, uh, and sometimes I think, particularly in Christian circles, we're shy on advocacy because we're big on mercy. And uh, you know, Micah six eight, you know, it says, you know, love mercy for sure, and and act humbly and do justly. Right. And there is this, I think those things go together to actually really truly love someone is to, to love them in public and to say, sure. it matters to me sure. uh, that this is happening. So I think, and I think we're learning, this generation's learning that advocacy is a big piece we need to yeah. understand yeah. and then uh, just start working towards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you've got a lot of great stories that we could go on and on about. Yeah. Um, but I want to encourage people to get your story and your book, A Beautiful Mess. Sure. So I, I didn't read all of your other books or yeah. was, do you have 
Is there one where you've got a lot of stories about the women that you have helped? Because I know you've got just story after story after story. Yeah. Have you, have you put all that together? Yet? No, that's not. That's coming. That's <laughs> that coming? coming, I think. Okay. Yeah. And we're, I'm actually working on a book right now called Exodus, where I'm going to talk about the people of God getting free from oppression, yeah. uh, both personally and also corporately, and what that looks like, you know, what it looks like to live free from a, a dominant power. And, um, and so a lot of those stories will be around women coming out of the sex trade and women yeah. coming out of prostitution as an oppression. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know you've got to have some just from all, and I will recommend your blog. Yeah, I, sure. I mean, where was the website? Was DanielleStrickland.com. Okay. I yeah, there's right. a blog there. And on there are a bunch of the Salvation Army, of course, and the local work I do, as well as um, Stop the Traffic, which yes. is an organization, that a movement that I'm helping to, to lead around the world. Yeah. Uh, and a few other of the proje projects that I, are near to my heart. Yeah, yeah, I saw those. And you also have some great stories. Great. Uh, there was a, a, a woman um, who was left for dead. Yes. Um, yeah. That was just gut-wrenching yeah uh, and what you're doing about it mm, um, so anyway great stuff I thanks. highly recommend it yeah danielstrickland.com check out her book a beautiful mess and of course don't miss her when she's on life today you can see that at lifetoday.org thank you so much for being with us you're for welcome. doing the work you're doing and thanks. taking a little time out to, to come share your stories great.